This is Russia's next-generation tank, the T-14 Armata, the latest tank from a country that has long prided itself on its armored assets. The T-14 is supposed to be armed with all the latest modern weapons, gadgets, and protective armor, in an ensemble meant to be a clear break from Soviet-era tank conventions which stretch back to World War II's revered T-34. Russia sells the T-14 as being in a league of its own, with capabilities that exceed all tanks of foreign manufacture. Indeed, the tank and the chatter around it gave Western observers the chills for a while. However, this facade is probably not all it's cracked up to be. Here's why Russia's next-generation T-14 Armata sucks when it actually comes to winning wars. Work on the project began in 2010 under the label Object 195. The first basic model of the new tank was introduced in July 2012. The Kremlin publicly unveiled this model as the T-14 Armata at a Victory Day parade in 2015, and the tank is supposed to enter full service by 2024. The Armata has, however, suffered multiple delays throughout its brief history. Thus far, only a single T-14 has been spotted in Ukraine. The sighting came in the village of Mijinskaya in Luhansk Oblast on October the 8th. The unit may have been placed there to serve as a command tank for other Russian armored assets. The Russians may also be deploying the T-14 tank as a psychological operation to increase morale on their own side after having experienced embarrassing defeats and to send a message to the Ukrainians that they have yet to best their top-line gear. But how top-line is the Armata really? Would it really make a difference in Ukraine and change Russia's ebbing fortunes if it were deployed in greater numbers? On the surface, the T-14 possesses formidable attributes. It has frontal base armor protection of over 900 mm in combination with Malachit Explosive Reactive Armor and the Afghani Active Protection System. If its armor system works as advertised, the T-14 should be able to take hits from any known tank munition, and with Ukraine's lack of advanced tanks, this could prove a problem should the Armata get deployed in large numbers. The T-14's armor is also supposedly resistant against handheld anti-tank weapons like the famous Javelin, which the Ukrainians have used to great effect against Russian armor in the war. The T-14 also boasts a separate, self-contained crew capsule that is isolated from its magazine and specifically designed to protect the three-man operating team from anti-tank fire, maximizing its defensiveness and aiding its ability to act as a command unit. Other shielding mechanisms include active defense systems at the front of the vehicle to shoot down common anti-tank weaponry, such as RPGs. The tank also reportedly has stealth features, with its armor having a lower radar cross-section than other tanks in use. But that's not all. The Armata is a quick and maneuverable tank, with a top speed of 75 to 80 km per hour in both forward and reverse modes. In contrast, most of Russia's widely used tanks can only achieve a top speed of 4 km per hour while in reverse, making them easy to target with anti-tank fire. The T-14 has a remote-controlled turret that loads automatically with a 45-round magazine. The standard gun is a 125mm 2A82-1M smoothbore, but it can be upgraded to a 2A83 152mm gun. Either type can also fire laser-guided missiles. The T-14's secondary weapons include the Cord 12.7mm machine gun or PKTM 7.62mm machine gun. The Armata's engagement range exceeds any Western tank, as it can hit targets up to 12 kilometers away. Sounds incredible, right? Here's the thing, though. All of these defensive and offensive features sound impressive, but Russia has proven that it isn't exactly a trustworthy source of information about its own capabilities. In reality, the T-14 has shown itself to be lacking so far, and not all is as it seems. The tank's problems stretch back to its debut, when one of them broke down and had to be towed away for repairs during a rehearsal for a military parade in Red Square in 2015, which would have been one of its first public showings. This proved only the first of many embarrassments. Often those shortcomings included not being able to pay for or manufacture the tank at scale. An impressive weapon means little if you cannot produce it in the numbers needed to shift the balance of power on the battlefield. The only one T-14 has been spotted in Ukraine after nine months of war suggests a few problems for the Russians in actually using the tank. The T-14 has been plagued by numerous delays since its public debut in 2015. The Kremlin's initial plans to field 2,300 Armata tanks proved unaffordable and Russia needed to settle for a much smaller total. The Russian armed forces expected the first batch of nine in 2018, but the Kremlin moved the date back first to 2019 and then 2020. A 2020 report in The Diplomat stated that 132 Armatas would be delivered by 2022, but that has not happened either. It turns out that the company that manufactures the tank, Oral Vagonzavod, also had its fair share of problems. The company is 87 billion rubles in debt and needed to cut the pay of its workforce by 21% between 2019 and 2020. These financial problems may be a reason why only 20 finished T-14s exist as of 2021. The Armata's frequent glitches 
and production delays came before the hefty sanctions the international community levied in retaliation for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Such sanctions will make it even more difficult for Russia to obtain the materials it will need to manufacture the T-14's advanced electronics, among other systems. The T-14 may have all the high-tech features that Russia claims it has, but even if all of it was true and it all worked, it means little if the Russians cannot deploy them on the battlefield. The next-generation tank also means little if it's too expensive and becomes a white elephant, which may be the reason why Russia has been hesitant to use the T-14 in Ukraine until now. The Ukrainians have proven excellent tank killers and capturers in this war. The prospect of the T-14 falling into enemy hands must make the Kremlin take pause, and if you're too scared of losing a weapon system to deploy it, it's not exactly a useful tool. Indeed, because Russia has been unable or unwilling to produce the T-14 Armata at scale, it has instead used its resources to upgrade its older arsenal of tanks, such as the T-72, T-80, and T-90A. There are other problems for the T-14 tank as well, ones which go beyond cost, manufacturing, and delivery. One of the reasons for the delays includes continual glitches in the T-14 software. These glitches came partly because of sanctions that the West imposed on Russia following its annexation of Crimea in 2014. Particularly, a major weakness inherent in the Armata is that its much-vaunted protective crew capsule cannot revolve like the gun turret can. The engineering arrangement means that the tank relies on optical systems and electronics to deliver visual information to the crew. That is not exactly ideal when you can't get your software right, and even if it were to check out, how would the crew react to their electronics being taken out during a battle? Speaking of systems failure, some American Abrams crews who are familiar with the T-14 were not impressed with what they saw. They questioned the emphasis of its supposedly modern auto-loading cannon. When speaking in a 2018 report for Business Insider, they asked what would happen if something goes wrong in the middle of a battle and the automated loader stopped working. How much work would it take to get the breach open and get down in there? Since the self-isolated crew capsule is separate from the turret, the answer is it could take a lot of work. As the United States has seen with the F-35s and other expensive modern systems, sometimes Sometimes having the most cutting-edge technology means you sign up for a lot more things potentially going wrong, and if anything is true on a battlefield, many things will go wrong. No plan survives the first contact with the enemy. Even if the T-14's auto-loading system works perfectly, it faces another disadvantage. It is slow. Auto-loading may sound modern, but an American Abrams crew with a human loader can actually get shots off faster. They can usually fire their weapons in five-second intervals at the maximum and more often than not under four. According to Sergeant Emmett Fulgham, a tank gunner with 3rd Battalion 8th Cavalry Regiment who talked about the subject to the military publication Coffee or Die. In contrast, the T-14's auto-loader takes 10 seconds or more to load and fire, meaning that its prospective Western opponents can get two or three shots off for every one that the Armata gets. The Armata may have a longer range, but with such limited numbers and large load times, it may simply not be able to put enough fire down range to tilt the scale of a battle, especially when there will not be many Armatas to begin with. The Armata has supposedly seen limited action in the field, and results have not been encouraging. According to the reports in Chinese media, the T-14 underperformed in its subdued use in Syria. Chinese media blasted the Russians for promoting false combat conditions under which the tank took part, claiming there was no evidence for anything that they were saying. With such praise from his friends, Vladimir Putin must be wondering what his enemies think. For their part, rebel factions in Syria commented that they had not encountered the Russians' newest tank. Other information out of Syria suggests that the Armata's vaunted system of protection didn't work so well. Reporting from 2020 indicated that soldiers wielding anti-tank weapons hit three T-14s, with one of them being completely destroyed. If such reports are true, it is feasible that the Armata's defenses do not live up to the Kremlin's hype, and that advanced anti-tank systems like the American Javelin, British Enlor, and Swedish AT-4 could destroy it, even if the crew in their isolated capsule compartment manages to survive the impact to the tank's turret and magazine. Perhaps this is the reason that only one Armata has been definitively spotted in Ukraine. Another problem that the T-14 faces is that foreign countries, even ones Russia has long had arms deals with like China, India, and Middle Eastern nations, don't seem eager to buy it. Russia has tried to sell the T-14 abroad, but it has found no buyers. The lack of foreign interest leaves Russia even more cash-strapped in developing it, since weapon R&D is expensive and foreign investments help to make the final product pay for itself. For example, robust foreign purchases of the F-35 Lightning II helped the United States share the burden in developing that infamously expensive platform. However, with the seeming lack of interest for Russia to buy one of its own assets and its design problems, other countries don't seem too keen on purchasing the Armata.
China even claims that its next-generation VT-4 tank is superior to the Armata. The T-14 Armata's problems are large enough to make the Kremlin reconsider its investment in it. Another tank design, which reportedly lost out to the Armata in the 2000s called the Burlak, is now the subject of discussion in the Russian military. This tank is less revolutionary. Instead, it evolves on Russia's older tank technology to produce a vehicle nearly as good as the Armata. Whether the Burlak re-emerges and spells the doom of the T-14 project remains to be seen. But one thing is certain. The T-14 shows us that appearances can be deceiving and that most modern does not always mean most useful. But what do you think? Does the T-14 Armata have the potential to become the world's greatest tank? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for more military analysis from military experts.